you know, I haven't talked to you ever since you got hired, but as a guy who spent your entire career in college, I'm curious if you had other opportunities to move to the NFL and, and what made this uh, the one to jump at? Well, you know, I, I did. I did have a couple, have a couple opportunities uh, some time ago, but it's probably like three years ago, uh, NFL team approached me and I had some conversation with scouts and things, you know, when we have pro days that, you know, asking me would I ever make the jump. And, uh, you know, this opportunity in terms of being a Northeast kid, um, you know, born and raised in the Northeast and having worked at Penn State, now the opportunity to work for the New York Giants is kind of like a dream come true. You know, it's kind of surreal that you go from the Penn State to New York Giants and just growing up in this area and hadn't recruited this area. So, um, you know, and then Pat Graham was a longtime friend of mine. i uh, known him since he was gra a graduate of Yale uh, University. So it just all made sense to me. And then a quick follow-up. You're known as a pretty intense guy from what I gather. Do you have to change <laughs> anything when you go from coaching college kids to, you know, professional adults that are grown men? No, I can't change, man. I can't change. So I got to, I'm coming, I'm coming hard every day. So, um, you know, those guys know about my energy and, you know, they've got the experience a little bit. I told them like today that, you know, this, that wasn't a one-time thing yesterday that it's going to be like that every day, but it's, it's a way you bring it, you know, I mean, you can bring positive energy and be excited without, you know, being, you know, berating somebody, you know, they, they can feel when you're upset and feel when you're happy. So, uh, I, I have to coach like that. When I leave the practice field, I got to be completely sweaty. I didn't do a good job. I'm just wondering, did you know, what did you know about Joe Judge? What kind of, did you have a relationship with him before and, and what have sort of been your early impressions of him? Well, you know, obviously, um, you know, we had a lot of success at New England and, you know, I had some guys like Brendan Daly, um, that was as a D-line coach from uh, Kansas City Chiefs. I never worked with Joe directly, but I had a bunch of guys uh, reach out to me when this opportunity came about before I was hired and told me all great things about Joe and, you know, how he works. You know, I mean, he's a highly organized guy, you know, um, you know, very detailed. I mean, it is what it is with him. It's mapped out. And this is how it goes. And, uh, you know, I really respect that. Um, Obviously, he learned from some great ones. I've been working with Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. And, um, you know, I'm excited to work with him. Appreciate it. Lombardo. Hey, Sean. Good to see you, man. What's going on, man? Hey, um, looking at the defensive line you have now, some talented dudes up front, right? Like Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams. Um, yeah. What do you see out of these guys? And what's the ceiling for your group? Because top to bottom, you can make a case it's one of the deepest position groups on the roster. Well, you know, one of the things I talked about the guys with today, you know, obviously, you know, coming into it, you know, um, quote unquote, we are a talented group, right? So coming into this and I just told them, I'm here to help them reach their potential and beyond. And, and, and I don't care if you're a high, we're a high draft pick or, or you're a free agent or middle ground, whatever. I'm here to help you reach your potential. And that's why, you know, coach brought me in, you know, um, I, I'm going to work with these guys and take them to the next step, whatever that step is, you know, um, I'm a, I want to take them to their potential and beyond. Um, it's, some, it's a great room of guys. Um, I'm truly, truly blessed to have, have such a great group in my first year in the NFL. Um, and I'm just excited for it. So just taking them to the next level and, and this, just working at ma ha having them master their craft. You know, So I'm excited about that. What does that look like for a guy like uh, Dexter Lawrence? Because last year the staff kind of played him in the middle with nose tackle with defensive ends, some other spots. What do you see in his skill set and, and kind of what's the ceiling for him? Well, you know, I, I don't know what the ceiling would be for, uh, would be for him, but I'm just telling you, you know, I, I feel like he's one of the more athletic kids that I've, I've seen, you know, just to have, to, to, that I've had the opportunity to coach. Um, I knew him in high school uh, back in North Carolina. I watched him. Uh, do a workout, and I was just amazed at how how fluid he was as an athlete. And I'm seeing some of that, some of the signs of, of that already. Um, what his ceiling is, I don't know. You know, we, we're gonna we're gonna prepare him for the season, and 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 I'm gonna push him to the brink and and try to get the best out of him. Um, you know, obviously, you, you guys are seeing he's tremendously athletic. Uh, we just gonna, we'll put everything together, and he, he's, he listens, and he's a sponge for coaching, and we'll we'll make him get in that you know, get to his potential that way. I wanted to ask you about um, a common thing that you see a lot with young defensive linemen. Sometimes they struggle to finish on the pass rush. And, uh, you know, we noticed that when I say we here at, at our publication, we noticed that like with Leonard Williams, he has struggled to finish and whatnot. And I'm just wondering, what are some of the things that maybe you can teach these guys to help them with finishing 
the pass rush and getting the ultimate prize, which of course would be the sack. Right. So that's a great point. You know, what I do is I stand on the sideline and I practice, and if they don't get to the quarterback, I chase them to the ball. <laughs> so that's a good drill call. I'm going to chase you to the ball until you get to where you're supposed to go. But, you know, it just you bring up a great point about finishing on the quarterback and just finishing drills. You know, everything you do, if you you do it with a finish, you know, you, you now you create the muscle memory. And, and like you said, the ultimate prize is getting to the getting to the quarterback, you know, so to speak. But also we want to make sure that they're functioning within the defense, right? So we don't want them to go outside of what, what we're uh, asking them to do schematically. So, um, you know, finishing on the quarterback is a good thing. Finishing on the ball carrier is a good thing. But like I said, I know it sounds like cliches, but I'm going to chase them to the, to the ball. You got to do that for them uh, when they're on the actual field playing? No, no, no. It's muscle memory, right? So muscle memory that in the back of their head, they'll know that coach will be chasing me right now. So they will, they will run after the quarterback. With Leonard Williams in particular, a high draft pick, um, obviously the Jets were willing to trade him to the Giants. Kind of picking up on what Patty just asked you, but how can you unleash the Leonard Williams that, that teams expect to get? Um, and he's almost always that close. Mm, yeah, so how do you unleash that part? I think what you know in the off season here, you know, through the Zoom and things like that, because it's just a, a different situation. I was able to develop a, quite the relationship with Leonard, um, and I think um, he knows I have his best interests in mind. And uh, you know, he wants to have success. You know, no one goes out on the field and say say that I was just high draft pick that um, you know I haven't I haven't reached my potential. He wants to be great. He's detailed in the meetings. He asks great questions. You know, he's in the football. And, you know, I'm here to help help him take his next step, whatever that is. Um, you know, he, he's a talented guy, and I'm excited to work with him. Do you have to convey to these guys that it's not okay with you, that they're close? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can definitely let them know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I haven't had him in practice yet, Kim. You know, so obviously I never go back on those things that were well, last year. I just use that as a barometer of things that I – you know, that, that I need to look at and study to see what I need to do to make them the best they can be. But, you know, I really don't go back and just say, hey, you didn't do a lot of finishing last year. Now, I know I saw the film, but, you know, it's a new year, it's a new start, and, you know, all I will have is what they, they put on the, the tape and practice for me now during camp. Thank you. Yeah. Zach? Hey, Sean. Uh, I was wondering, you know, you obviously know Cam Brown as well as anyone on the staff just from being around him at Penn State. Like, what, what's been – what, what can you say that the Giants are getting in Cam Brown and then what's kind of been your impression of him being around the Well, team? you know, I mean, obviously being, being with Cam at Penn State and having was part of the, the group of individuals that helped recruit him and everything. So I've got a long-standing relationship with Cam. You know, uh, I won't make any predictions for Cam like that, but I can tell you personally, he's a very conscientious uh, individual. He's going to become a student. He's a student of the game and, you know, he'll be an ultimate team player. Uh, he'll do whatever you ask. Um, he's always a team first guy. So that's what I, I, I could definitely quote myself on saying that he'll be a, a, a team first individual. What, what do you what do you remember about when you were recruiting him? Like what when like way back then? Well, well he was skinny, man. He was skinny, man. He, <laughs> he was he was just tall and skinny. I asked him if he was a two guard on the basketball court. <laughs> but, you know, he gained some, you know, he gained some weight. He got some muscles now and he. He wears shirts that don't fit, so his muscles pop out. But, um, you know, he's definitely improved his size. Um, he's worked at he's worked at getting stronger in the weight room and just changing his body. I, mean, I think he's like 230 right now. So he looks great, um, you know, and just recruiting him. You know, a, a funny story I could tell you, his dad could cook. I mean, I don't know if I mean, <laughs> his dad could cook. I mean, that was some of the best food I've ever had in my life. So. <laughs> What do you cook you? <laughs> uh, we I can't tell that secret. I can't tell that secret. <laughs> Worth a shot. Because his mom will get mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Last question here, Rock. Sounds like his dad was recruiting you instead of the other way around, maybe. No, that was the fun thing about going on those home visits. You get to you, you get to go to different families and get food and things like that. One kid in particular, we didn't have a dinner, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned earlier about how you told the players that uh, I guess yesterday's energy wasn't an aberration. Uh, right. going to continue. Uh, how did that manifest itself? What what like what happened yesterday that you felt like you had to sort of explain? Well, that? I was excited. You know, I mean, it's really you know one of my first like full like you come to the NFL right. It's one of your you know it's phase it's, it's phase two and it's like one of your first kind of not practice but you know you get to move around and do certain things and you know I had my whole group there. 
you know, I had been working with, you know, a couple of young guys. At first, that was the first time that I got my group on the field at the same time and got to run drills with them. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm walking around pre-practice in a full sweat, you know, just bouncing up and down, just can't wait to coach these guys. And then I wanted them to understand that this is not something that just I'm just going to do on occasion. This is how they're going to get coached. And that's kind of all I was letting them know, that it wasn't going to be a day off. I want them to match my energy every day. You going to be okay on Monday? Oh, yeah, I get a little stretch out, get rolled out. I'm good to go, man. <laughs>